We're going to start with arithmetic. So did we do this before? How would you add the first 10 numbers real quick? Yeah, do 1 plus 10, then what? 2 plus 9, 8 plus 3, 4 plus 7, and 5 plus 6. There are 5 11s, which will give you 10 over 2, 1 plus 10, right? And could you use that same trick to add the first 50? What would that number be? Don't worry about calculating it, but how would you set it up? What's half of 50? 25 times what? 51. How about 1 to 100? 50 times 101. Did we talk about what that number is? 50, 50. And then you can do the first 1,000, which is 500, 500. Very cool. Okay, so that's arithmetic. Now, there's a proof of, you, of developing this formula that I think you might be impressed with. Maybe you won't. But uh, it's pretty cool. Do you have this one, this slide? Sum is equal to the first term. So here's the first term. Here's the second term, A plus B. Here's the third term, fourth term. And then this is the nth term. And the n minus one term. That's not really a word, but n minus one is this guy, and then this will be the n minus tooth term. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replicate this. I'm going to write the same one underneath, except I'm going to do something kind of tricky. Instead of putting the first term here at the beginning, I'm going to put it here at the end. Would you write that in? This is an ingenious proof that I want you to have in your notes. The second term, a plus b, I'm going to put over here. Okay. The third, I'm going to put here. And it's a plus 2d. Okay. Then I'm going to take the nth term, and I'm going to bring it back to the beginning here. a plus n minus 1 times d. I'm going to take the n minus 1, a plus n minus 2 times d, and then you get the idea, right? You got it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pair these off. I'm going to put these two together. I'm going to put these two together, these two together, these two together. Every other one, and these would have pairs too, but I just didn't write them out. So if I take sum plus sum, how many of these sums am I going to have? Sum plus sum. Two of them, right? And then I'm going to take a plus this. I'm going to get a plus a is 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Now I'm going to add these two. A plus A is 2A plus D plus uh, ND minus 2D. Well, what's, what's D minus 2D? Negative D. So this is just going to be N minus 1 times D. Again, you see how these are identical? See how those are the same? Each time we write this, it's going to be 2a n minus 1 times d. Very distinct over here. You're going to have 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And this is going to be 2a plus n minus 1 times d. I know, exciting. Super. So how many of those do I have? How many of those 2a plus n minus 1 times d do I actually have? I have n of them. 2a plus n minus 1 times d. I have n of them. And if I divide both sides by 2, I'm going to get the final formula, 
which is n over 2, 2a, n minus 1, times d. That is the sum equation for an arithmetic. And key here is arithmetic, because what letter do you see in here that's not in a geometric? The, the D, the difference, right? All right, so here's this, this one worked out. Uh, let's look at the second one, number two. It says U of N is equal to negative 2 plus 8N. So let's look at the first term, U of 1. Put in a 1 for n, what's the u of 1? 6. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. Now put in a 2, now you're going to get negative 2 plus 16, which is going to be what? 16 minus 2 is 14, and then you're going to have uh, 24 minus 2 is 22. Okay. What do you seem to be doing each time here? seems like we're adding 8, doesn't it? Okay. So, the first term is 6, not negative 2. The, sec the end terms we're looking at is 10, and the common difference we said was 8. So when I take the sum of the first 10 terms, I times n... 10 over 2, 2 times the first term, plus n, which is 10 minus 1, times the difference common is 8. So I get 10 over 2, uh, 9 times 8 is 72. Oh, well, let's make life easier here. Let's divide this by 2 and this by 2. So 4 times 9 is 36 plus 6 is 42. 42 times 10 is 420. Anybody having trouble with the mathematics there? Did I get the right answer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there you go. That's one of that's one of the ways that you could apply that for the sum formula. Now let's do with geometric. Now geometric is a different formula and a whole different ball game. What are we doing each time here? Here we're multiplying by 2, right? So this has a common ratio, and thus we're going to have a different formula for finding the sum. This one is pretty cool, but it's also pretty irritating. Can everybody go to this one? Would you write the sum formula? This is the first term, second term, third term, and so on a to the r, a r to the n minus 1, this is the last term, second to the last, third to the last. Follow me on that. Anybody confused on that? Okay. So now, everybody has this one? So, Lauren, make sure that you write uh, on this one. We're going to multiply every one of these by r. And so I'm going to have r times sum r times a, I'm going to move it here, r times a, r, r times a, r squared, and so on. When we get to the end, we're going to multiply, we're going to have this one duplicated, but when we multiply a, r to the n minus 1 times r to the first, what happens to the powers, n minus 1 plus 1, what happens to this n minus 1? Changes to just n, right? Because negative 1 plus 1 is just going to be n. That's why I have this one sitting out here. Okay. So I wrote the sum formula. Remember we had a plus ar plus ar squared and so on. I'm just multiplying by an extra r each time. And I'm going to subtract everything. So would you put a little minus sign next to each of those? You can do that on your iPad. then I'm going to notice that I can pair off this AR, these two. Wait, I'm going to do it this way. So pair these off. These, 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 these. 
And when I cancel those, what happens? When I cancel these, what's left? What's left? You have this thing and this thing and these two. Okay? So on my equation, I'm going to have S sub n minus R S sub n. On the other side of the equation, I'm going to have A minus A R to the n. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out an S sub n. Okay, so I'm going to take out an S sub n, leaving 1 minus R. What can I take out of these two terms? A and AR to the n, what can I take out? An A, leaving 1 minus R to the n. Yep. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 1 minus R. And guess what? That's it. A times 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. And that is the sum of a geometric series. We proved it. And just a little talk here about the, the um, domain. A times 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. What's the one value for R we can't have? Yeah, this can't be zero, so we don't want R to be what? One. So there's two reasons you don't want R to be one. One is it makes the sum undefined. But also, look at, look at, here's a series that has one as a ratio. What's a problem with it? Is that arithmetic or geometric? Yes. <laughs> it's arithmetic because what are we adding each time? We're adding zero, okay? And it's geometric because what are you doing? You're multiplying by one. So because it's both, it's really not considered useful to use this um, to use this formula. And for sure, because if you put in a, a one, it'll just be undefined. But it also is ambiguous sequence. So let's go down to a sample problem. And this is this is the last of the sample ones I'm going to do. Uh, we have a bunch of logs lined up. They're stacked up. 15 logs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then you have 16. And then you have 17. You get the picture, right? Okay. There's always a little slope to it on the outside. They sit on each other a little bit. What we want to do is how many rows are there if there's a total of 246 logs? So 15 plus 16 plus 17 should be equal to 246. So let's list what we know. What do we know about this? Do we know A, the first term? What is it? 15. Notice how easy this is when you list them out first? And then what's um, the common difference, Allie? Perfect. Yeah, it's just one. We're adding one each time. And you would make me very happy on a test or a quiz if you did these little swooshes. Because it really visualizes for you what's going on and which to do, arithmetic or geometric. Uh, we don't know what n is. But we do know what the sum of n is. What's the sum? 246. All right. So plug them in. Uh, sum of n equals... A times 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Do you mind that I wrote the formula first? It's a habit for labs and just it helps clarify things. S sub N is 246. A is 15. 
And there is, oh, I apologize. This is the geometric. I don't want geometric, I want arithmetic. So I'm going to go sum of n of uh, n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Wasn't thinking there. So 15 over 2, then it's going to be 2a plus n, and n we don't know. D is 1, Sally said perfectly. Let's multiply both sides by 2, and you're going to get uh, 4, 8, uh, 92 equals 15 times 2A. Oh, and what was A again? A is 15, so I can say 2A is 30. But we don't know, and 30 minus 1 plus n. 30 minus 1 is 29. All right. Right. So this is n over 2. Okay, let's start over here. I got it. I want to make sure it's clean. So we're using this 246 equals n over 2. 2 times 15 plus n minus 1, d is 1. Multiply both sides by 2, you get 492. n times 30 minus 1 is 29 plus n. Okay, uh, let's see. This is going to be... 492 equals 29n plus n squared. What's that? Ugh. Quadratic again. So you're going to go n squared uh, plus 29n minus 492 equals 0. And I, 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 do you know how to factor 492, Aaron? Yeah. Is 492 divisible by 3? Do you know that little trick for divisible by 3? Take all of the digits of 492. If the sum is divisible by 3, this will be divisible by 3. Add these up, you get 11 and 4 is 15. It is. So if you divide this by 3 in your head or on paper, it's going to be 164 times 3. And is 164 divisible by 4? Yep. It'll be uh, 4 times 41. 4 times 3 is 12. So, hmm. No way it is plus 41 and minus 12. What's 41 minus 12? 29. Yeah, it's almost like I planned this. Okay, there's two cases where this works. Either n plus 4 equals 0, or n minus 12 equals 0. And, or uh, 41, yeah. So does, does, does this work? n equal to negative 41, will that work? Will n equal to 12 work? Yep. So there's going to be 12 rows of a log to get 246. Yeah. Oh, because it's a negative 41. Yeah. Okay, and then we go back to the problem. So we figured out how many rows there are. There are 12. That was really hard earned. How many logs are there on the 12th row? Well, all you do is use the other formula. The other formula says the a of 12 is the first term plus 12 minus 1 times the common difference. So what's 15 plus 11? 26 logs. And that's how you use those sum and difference formulas to solve real problems.